What's up guys and welcome back to Software Knowledge Solutions and today we're talking about Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people are playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare multiplayer right now, but a lot of people are not getting the frames that they want to get inside the game with their components that they're currently running. So if you want to have a smooth gameplay experience like this... Then all you need to do is follow my guidelines and you should be good to go. And on an important note, this does work for Modern Warfare and Call of Duty Warzone. All right, so the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the search button up here and type in settings just like this and press enter. Now, I highly, highly recommend you go ahead and do this. Click on update and security and make sure that your Windows is up to date. Go to check for updates and make sure that your Windows is up to date on a regular basis. Please go ahead and do this. It doesn't matter if you're running Windows 10 or 11, go ahead and see if you have the latest updates installed. Now, as you can see, I have a download and install option over here. If you see this, please go ahead and download and install this update over here. I'm not going to do that right now, otherwise you're going to watch me download and install this. You're going to go back to the home page over here and you're going to go to privacy and you're going to scroll all the way down to where it says background apps. Now, a lot of people might have this on like this and all of these things here are going to run in the background while you are playing Call of Duty or Warzone. So I highly recommend you just go ahead and switch this off just like this. So it won't use resources like your RAM, your CPU and stuff like that in the background while you are playing your game. All right, next step is you're going to click on home and you're going to go to gaming over here and go to game mode. Now for a lot of people this works and for a lot of people this don't work. So it's your own personal preference depending on the machine that you're running. No one runs the exact same machine. So if you switch this on and you do a smoother frame rate in your game, then go ahead and switch it on. It's common knowledge. If you switch this off, for me, just in general, I switch it off because when I switch it on, it does nothing for me. I don't get an increase. I don't get a decrease. If I keep it off, I don't get an increase. I don't get a decrease, right? But there's a lot of other things that you can do to make your game run a little bit better in general, all right? So you're going to click over here, the next step, which is graphics settings. And then you're going to go over here where it says hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. All right, this plays a very big role for two reasons. Number one, if you are just a gamer and you do not stream like live stream on Twitch or YouTube or where whatever platform you're streaming on. If you are a streamer and you game at the exact same time, I highly recommend switching this off. If you only play games and you don't stream, go ahead and turn this on and keep it on if you have this option. Now, if you do not have this option, don't worry. There's another way of adding the game into this over here and then pushing it to its best performance. All right, so I'm going to remove mine and I'm just going to add it again, just to show you how to do this. You click on Browse over here, and you're going to go where your Call of Duty is installed. Mine is over here, where it says Call of Duty, then Modern Warfare, and then as you can see, it says Launcher, and then it says Modern Warfare EXE. You're going to click on the EXE file and say Add. All right, there's the EXE file. You click on Options and go to High Performance. Click on this and say Save. Once you are done with that, you're going to go one back and you're going to go to the home page over here. Now, this is very important for people out there that's playing this game on a laptop or a desktop. It doesn't matter. I play mine on a desktop computer and I still go ahead and do this. Go to personalize like this and then go to colors. Now, I highly recommend you go ahead and change this from light to dark. The reason why I do not want to click on light is because if you're watching this at night time, you're going to get a flashbang and I don't want to do that. So just change it to dark, put transparency effect off and choose any color you want inside here. But I do recommend a darker color, the darker, the better your performance in your computer. And no, it does not boost your FPS. It doesn't do anything with your game's performance, but it makes your computer much, much better, especially if you are running this game on a laptop. All right, the next step you're going to need to do is click on the home page over here and then you're going to close out of this. From here, you're going to go to the search button over here and type in device manager, just like this, and open up device manager. You're going to go to display adapters, click on this, and then right click on it and go to update drivers and then say search automatically for drivers. Now, this is the quick and easy way to let you know if you have the latest graphics card drivers installed on your machine. 
all right? If you see it starts downloading something, that means that your grab has got drivers are out of date. Okay, another important note is if you click on desktop over here and you say scan for hardware and changes, it will let you know if there's any new updates for something to do with anything inside your components for your machine. Right, once you are done with that, you're going to close out of this. And then this is a very, very important step for people out there that's playing this on a budget gaming PC or a budget gaming laptop. Or just doesn't matter, whatever gaming PC you're using or gaming laptop. All right, go to the search button over here and type in edit power plan, just like this. Edit power plan, go to edit power plan, and then go to power options over here. All right, so once you're in here, what you're going to do is you're going to go to create a power plan, and you're going to create a power plan. Because if I go one back, a lot of people don't have this ultimate performance power saver. These are the ones I created, as you can see. But a lot of people don't have ultimate performance, high performance, you know, and then balance. Normally, people just have the balance option. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a power plan over here. Go to high performance and then type in anything inside here. Let's just say the best settings for modern warfare and warzone, just like that. And then go to next. Now, this is your personal preference, your own personal preference. I keep mine on never though, and I create it. Now we have a power plan over here. Go to change plan settings, go to change advanced power settings, and now we have an active power plan for Call of Duty and Warzone. So, Modern Warfare and Warzone. First option is turn off hard disk after. Now, if you are playing this game on a hard drive, or you're playing this game on a laptop with a hard drive, or a PC with a hard drive, I highly recommend you go ahead and go into this box and type in zero and click anywhere, and it's going to say turn off hard disk after never, meaning your hard drive will never go to sleep. Now, I have M.2s and SSDs, and I still go ahead and change this to never. So it's not about having a hard drive, but people with hard drives, it's very important to go ahead and change this, right? Scroll all the way down to where it says process of power management, and then go to minimum process of state, and make sure you put this on 100. You can just click on it, and then type in 100, just like this, and then click anywhere, all right? Now, with laptops, you're going to get two options. It's going to say on battery and plugged in, okay? Change them both to 100%, and then this one over here, maximum process of state, should be on 100 as well on your laptop plugged in and on battery so you'll get four options on a laptop and two options on a desktop all right so these two go ahead and change them both to 100 percent once you're done with that you're going to say apply and say okay you're going to close out of this all right the next step is going to be in the video control panel now i am a nvidia graphics card user so if you are just go ahead and go to nvidia control panel and open up your nvidia control panel like this all right once your nvidia control panel is open there's a few things i want to show you guys with these things that you can change inside here to get the best performance out of your game before I go ahead and jump into the game and show you the settings you should be using to get the best performance out of your game. Well, you can do about 200, 240. You can get really high FPS depending on the maps you play and depending on where you play and what you're obviously playing, especially the maps. All right, go to adjust image settings with preview just like this. And make sure you say use the advanced 3d image settings and then it's going to say take me there now if you click on take me there it's basically just going to take you over here now i highly recommend go ahead and change this in the global settings so it can do it for warzone and modern warfare and most of your games that you are busy playing right now all you need to do is you can just pause the video just follow my guidelines on these all right so this way it says open gl rendering gpu i highly recommend you go ahead and click on this and then you're going to select your dedicated graphics card. Do not select auto select, select your graphics card. Before maximum performance, default driver on, clamped quality on, auto off. Use the 3D application settings one and off. And then also these over here, this on two, and then that on four, and these off, and that one on over here. All right, you're going to keep this on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this one plays a very, very big role inside your game, depending on what type of graphics card you have, all right? So if you have a 10 series graphics card and anything lower than that, I highly suggest you go ahead and change this to performance. If you have a very, very old PC and you really want to play COD and you're like a COD fanatic or whatever the case might be, but you've got a really old PC with a really old graphics card, then go ahead and change it to high performance, all right? So I have a 20 series graphics card. It is a RTX 2060 OC with a 9700K water cooling block and then also 16 gigs of RAM and 
every single component in my PC has been overclocked, so I keep this on quality. If you have anything like that and higher, go ahead and change it to quality and just go ahead and apply it over here at the bottom. Once you're done with that, you're going to go to config surround and physics and then go ahead and select your graphics card here. Do not say auto select, do not say CPU, go to your graphics card like this and then apply the settings here at the bottom. Once you're done with that, you're going to go to this over here where it says change resolution and you're going to go over here where it says use NVIDIA color settings. Now, I highly recommend you go ahead and do these people. Please go ahead and do it. Obviously, you're going to put this on the highest. This, you're going to just keep on eight. You can also put this on 12. It does make the your quality of your screen look much, much better. So you can use all the color out of your graphics card. Go ahead and put this on full, not limited. Put it on full and then apply these settings just like this. I'm just going to say yes and leave it like this. Now, it's going to keep it like that for me. And then you're going to go over here and you're going to go to with nvidia settings you're going to go here go to this and then apply these settings over here once you're done with that you're going to close out of this i'm just going to say no once you're done with that as you can see i don't know if you can see it yourself but i can my monitor or my screen in general just looks much better because of the digital vibrance and the color that it's giving out for my screen so my game looks much much better all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump straight into the game. Let me show you the settings I'm using for Season 5 right now for Warzone and Modern Warfare to get the best frames out of your game. All right, let's jump straight into that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm in Call of Duty right now and I'm doing about 200 FPS, but this is just the selection screen, so it has nothing to do with FPS over here. So I'll either go into Warzone or multiplayer like this and go into multiplayer and then just say continue and be in the lobby like this. Okay, so as you can see, I'm doing about 130. Um, it will fluctuate until it's stable. That's just Call of Duty for you in general. It doesn't matter if you're playing Warzone or you are playing multiplayer. So I'm doing about 140 FPS max in the lobby. Now, as you saw earlier on, while I was playing the game, I was doing 180, almost to 200 FPS. Now, the max that I do get while playing this game on certain types of maps is 240. Yes, you can reach 240 FPS depending on the settings that you're going to be using. All right. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to options over here and then go to graphics. You're going to go to display and put this at full screen. Do not play it in any other thing because you're going to get input latency lag and it's going to be just shit overall. So highly recommend put this at full screen. Put this as your native monitor, obviously the monitor you're currently running, and then put this on your graphics card you're currently running as well. And obviously you can see this over here. This is the screen refresh rate. So obviously it's going to be 60, 120, 144, or 240 refresh rate of your monitor depending on what monitor you can be running all right so i have these things locked because i lock them because this is what i play my game at i play my game at 1080p now the reason why i'm doing this is because i get more frames by playing at 1080p my games the higher you go 1440p and stuff like that and the higher the refresh rate of your monitor the less fps you're going to be doing but you can go ahead and change it to that to that 1440p and that let's say 240 hertz refresh rate okay then all you need to do is change these things i'm going to show you now okay dynamic resolution disable this put this at 10 this on automatic you can go ahead and change this if you have ultra wide screens and stuff like that but you can just go ahead and keep it on automatic this one you can go ahead and disable all right unless you're getting screen tearing like this then obviously you're going to enable it and then you're going to cap your fps to the refresh rate of your monitor that's if your game feels stable, if you put this on, it feels better, then go ahead and do that and cap it to the refresh rate of your monitor if you enable this. For me, my game's stable if I disable this. It's my own personal preference. Custom frame rate limit, you're going to keep this on unlimited. And then brightness, it's your own personal preference. Mine's just on 60, so I can actually see this Modern Warfare symbol over here, so I can actually find people that's hiding in dark corners. Never change this. Keep it at 2.2. NVIDIA highlights, disable this. And then NVIDIA reflex low latency. Okay. This plays a very big role on CPU and GPU. The reason why this is here is CPU and GPU bottlenecking. Okay, so if you do have a really good graphics card, but you have an older generation CPU, or you have a really good CPU and an older generation graphics card, is going to depend on what you're going to put this on. Okay, so go ahead and play around with this. If you know you do not have, I don't know, components that run very well together, like I said before, older generation CPU and a newer generation graphics card, or a newer generation CPU and an older generation graphics card. Now, this plays a very big role on 
this. Let me explain it to you. Okay, if you are running a very high-end CPU and a low-end graphics card, it means you are bottlenecking your machine, okay? Let's say you are running a high-end graphics card, low-end CPU, or a high-end CPU and a low-end graphics card. There's going to be a bottleneck in your game because your machine, like your graphics card, can't keep up with your CPU, or your CPU can't keep up with your graphics card, okay? Then you can go ahead and play around with these two. Find which one is the best for you. I keep mine disabled because my machine... The way it is right now is perfect for me and I don't need to change any of these because I don't get bottlenecking with my machine and my components that I'm currently running, right? You're going to apply these settings and then go to quality over here. This is your own personal preference, field of view, but I do highly suggest you go put this on affected and then this you're going to put on least. Render resolution, I highly recommend keeping this at 100. Just keep it at 100. Don't go up. Don't go down, just keep it at 100%, okay? Streaming quality on low, texture resolution. Keep this at normal. No, your game's not going to look like this. It's still going to look like that on normal, okay? If you want to get that extra FPS, then go ahead and put this on normal. Tester filter anisotropic, put this on normal as well. Particle quality on low. Bullet impacts and spray, obviously going to enable this. It has nothing to do with FPS. Tessellation, put this on near. This one over here. All right, the gore effects. This is obviously just if you shoot someone's head off or arms off or whatever the case might be, it looks cool. So go ahead and enable it. It has nothing to do with FPS. On demand texture streaming, disable this. Restart shader installation. I'll get to this just now. There's a reason why this is here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this plays a very big role inside the game. Okay, so let me explain this to you. Okay, if you have NVIDIA DLSS like me, I play my game currently at balanced and the game looks really good. And I still do really good FPS, okay? If you have an older generation graphics card and you do have NVIDIA DLSS, I highly recommend go ahead and put this on performance. Or you can go to ultra performance and you'll get more FPS out of your game. You will. But if you have a 20 series and higher, then go ahead and put this on balance and keep this at 1.00. Now, if you do not have NVIDIA DLSS, go ahead and put this all the way down. And then obviously you do not have this. Then go to this and put this on full make SMAAT2 times. Please go ahead and do that. Your game's going to look really, really good. And if you put it to this and you are losing frames, then all you need to do is put it on this and you should be good to go. All right. So I'm going to put mine back onto balance and put this all the way up because I'm using the video DLSS. Depth of field, you're going to disable it. This you're going to disable and this you're going to disable. You don't need this. It's a multiplayer game, not a single player game. All right. This shadow map resolution on low. These play a very big role in the whole thing fucking Call of Duty thing where every single person is going to either comment on my video saying why do you have this enabled and now if I have it disabled oh why do you have it disabled so it's a very big debate with these two settings right here I keep mine enabled right now for season 5 because it works perfectly fine with my machine it does nothing it just makes the game a little bit better a little bit smoother and that's why I have it enabled now it's your own personal preference depending on the machine that you're running particle lighting keep this at low DirectX Ray Tracing, you do not need this, it's not a single player game, go ahead and turn it off. Ambient Occlusion, disable this. Now a lot of people also debate about this, where people say, no, you must have this on both. It's a must. I do so much better FPS when I put this on both. Now if you are saying that in my comments, saying I do better FPS if I put this on both, then go ahead and put it on both. That's your machine, not mine. Okay, so the reason why I put this on disabled is because with my machine, I have this on disabled and I see an increase in my game. All right, screen space reflections as well. A lot of people say, no, you must put this on high. You have to put it on high. It makes the game so much better. No, Call of Duty in general, every time a new season comes out, they fuck up the game. So you have to basically jump through hoops to make the game run perfectly fine. So for me, I go ahead and put this on disable. I apply these settings. And then once you're done changing all these settings, you're going to click on restart shader installation. Wait till it finishes here at the top. Wait till it says installation complete. And then go ahead and go out of your game, restart your game and come back into your game. One very important note, when you launch Call of Duty and it asks you, would you like to run your game in safe mode? Say no. I'm going to repeat that. Say no. No to safe mode, because if you run your game in safe mode and you say yes, it's going to change all of these settings back to its default settings, and you don't 
want that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if this worked for you, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new year. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just here to help the Warzone and Call of Duty community as best I can. It's all I'm here to do. If this helped you, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new year. And as always, peace out.